Hey everybody, Kevin Thatcher, the owner of Independence Title, and welcome back to another how-to episode of Title Tuesdays. I'm joined today by another special guest. We have Jason Talley with Clear Choice Tax and Lean. Many people ask me all the times, well, you pull a lean search. They think a lean search is a title search, and we've talked in other episodes, two totally different searches. They search two totally different things. And what I'm gonna do is today we're gonna go through a lean search, and you're gonna see an overlay of the documents on here that's gonna talk about the different sections, because what I wanna teach you is because a lot of the investors or a lot of the clients, sometimes they don't get the choice to choose their lean search company. They don't get a choice to choose the title company to do their closing. So if we can teach you how to read a lean search, you can request from your title company, A, that they order a lean search and B, you know what you're looking for when that lean search comes in and the things to look at. So thanks for joining us today. My pleasure. Thanks for having me. So we've been using Clear Choice for many, many years. They're one of our go-to lean search companies because they, they deliver results. Their reports are clean. They, they point out issues. Uh, so the first thing you'll always see is a summary page. So we have that summary page that is just going to kind of give an overview of uh, all the different items that we're going to talk about, the different sections, and it's going to point out any major issues on there. And I'm assuming that's what your staff manually inputs that stuff on there for us? Absolutely. As the information comes in, our staff reviews the information and then puts it into a summary. So you'll have backup in additional detail, but at that point you should be able to look at the one page, which when you get it is in full color. And the idea is that the uh, errors are identified in red. So anywhere that you need to really check, anything that should draw your attention, a problem that you need to solve is going to be brought to you front attention with the red. Which is great. You know, red is always good. I was always told years ago I had a red pen when I would check closing statements for some of the staff and I'd always circle things in red and the red pen points out the issues. And one of the most important things I want to talk about that I notice a lot is there's also one thing that's on that summary page and that's the price, the cost of the search. Which is very important because a lot of title companies mark up their searches. I'm a firm believer that we just pass on the cost to the client. So if we pull a lean search and it's $135, we invoice $135 to the lean search company and pay the bill. So you just want to look and you, you know, it'll tell you if some of the title companies you may be doing business with are padding the fees. Um, if, if there's a third party vendor pulling a lean search, you should be paying the invoice for that service. So now let's get into what the lean search is and we'll talk about the different sections. The first section I wanna talk about, which we've done a video, I think our New Year's video was talking about our uh, property tax search. So tell them a little bit about what the property tax search does and why it's important. Well, the property tax search shows you that the taxes have been paid over multiple years. We get a detailed display that shows that the previous years are paid. And the reason why you wanna do that is because people can pull tax certifications or tax certs on your property which would allow them to eventually take over your property behind you through a tax certification or a deed sale done at the tax collector's office. We want to make sure that all the taxes are paid to the appropriate county uh, that's going to cover the school districts and all the other small fire and water, in some cases trash in Coral Springs, trash is paid through the bill, and that's going to make sure that you don't get your property stolen out from behind you by some type of a person looking for a tax deed sale. And we talk about property theft in other videos. The, the guy that we call, we did the big sting operation with, with getting the guy for home stealing scams. So again, it's very important to always check your tax collector. I recommend even homeowners do it at least once every six months just to make sure the property's in your name. If you have an escrow account, you want to make sure that your tax bill is actually being paid by your lender just because they mailed the check doesn't mean they actually paid the bill. Sometimes those checks get lost. So just check with your local tax collector. If taxes come out in November, you know they're supposed to be paid. Just check the tax collector's site. You can do that same type of search of what they pull for that, because a lot of the other stuff is more in depth, but most of the tax collectors you can search online and, and get that information. So make sure your taxes are paid. So the second part, I wanna talk about utilities. Now we've seen some properties that have had some excessive utilities. So let's talk a little bit about that. What do you search for utilities as far as maybe owners, owners, tenants, and things like that? Uh, well, every city and or county is a little bit different. You would be looking for mostly water, stormwater, trash are the major ones. Uh, utility companies most likely have the ability to lien your property, which can show up after the property has been sold. So unfortunately with these governmental agencies, they can sometimes come back behind you and place a lien that might not show on a title report. So the importance of getting a lien search and getting an active utility bill and making sure that that's paid is that the lien doesn't hit after the transfer of the property. You don't have to go back after a seller for an unpaid utility bill and that's why we offer that service. And that's important when you talk about utilities and he said that the key word is lien and we talked about lien search and title search and although his search is, is called a lien search, 
Believe it or not, leans do not necessarily show up on a lean search. What's gonna show up are, are issues that are gonna come up. So open utility bills, maybe tenant utility bills that are expired. Once it becomes a lien, it would show up on a title search most likely. But remember, these issues, if they're not addressed at closing, and a lot of title companies don't pull utility issues or they don't address um, tenant utility issues. So if a tenant is a rented property, and, and even though it may not lien the property, these owners could have a hard time putting the, the water in their name saying, oh, but there's a previous bill. Even though it doesn't affect title, they could still have a problem. So what we try and do is we pull it for any and all accounts tied to the property because we want to make sure that even if it's tenant, that it gets covered and paid. So this way, these buyers, when they're going to turn the water on, they're in good shape. Absolutely. They'll tell you that the property, that the utility bill doesn't attach to the property in particular, it attaches to the person. But like you said, a lot of new owners will have an issue opening up an account for in their name because there is an existing bill. Oh. And so even though they were told it didn't need to be paid at closing, they could still end up footing a bill just to be able to turn their water Yeah, off. someone will tell them, you gotta pay it. And then they just pay it. And then they come to a title company and title company says it's not our responsibility. So remember, these issues are not covered in title insurance. Lean search matters are not covered in the title insurance policy. So we need to make sure that we have a reputable company like ClearChoice pulling these searches and giving us a detailed report of things that come up. All right, let's move on to one of my favorites. We talk about code enforcement. Code enforcement, we know, have many scopes. They have code enforcement notices, code enforcement violations, and when it comes to title insurance, code enforcement liens. So what do you search for? What are the common, some of the common things you see come up? Uh, most of the common code enforcement issues would be, you know, you can have overgrown lots that needed to be mowed. Um, and if the county or the city needs to come out there and actually mow the lot for you, then that contractor will be paid by the county and then you will owe that money that you'll pay interest on. And at one point or another, that like a utility bill will potentially turn into a lien. But these issues can exist on a property before they actually become a lien when your title search will find it. So that what we do is we're finding these code violations, vehicles that are parked that are not supposed to be there, houses that are painted the wrong color, um, in addition to building violations which sometimes falls in the code for a fence where there shouldn't be a fence or a plastic fence where there should be a wood fence. Those types of issues can actually cross over between what is something you've built on the property that actually creates a code violation as well. And it's important, you know, he said something really important that a lot of these are violations that are picked up prior. So a lot of these banks, they don't even realize there's violations on there because a bank may own 10,000 properties uh, in Florida and all these notices of violations may not come up. They may not, may not even know. And a lot of times as a buyer from a bank, you may sign something that you're buying it as is. So the bank won't even take care of these things. So a company like ClearChoice is going to reach out to the different municipalities. And with some of these cities, and counties, sometimes you have to go to the county to get the information, and sometimes you have to go to the local municipality. So sometimes it could be a city, it could be the county that controls the city, um, and th so that's their job. They have a list of all of the counties and where the property is located and who to reach out to. So this way, when you become a buyer, you don't inherit someone else's problem. Absolutely. Uh, that's the tricky part about what a lien search is. It's not just going to one entity, it's knowing that the property is located in a certain neighborhood. That neighborhood is supplied by uh, this utility company for utilities that the actual county handles the permitting but the code enforcement may actually be done by the municipality so a lot of times the trash is separate by a private company like waste management potentially uh, we need to go to all these different people and that's what's compiled onto the summary report we go around gathering the information as quickly as possible to not delay and then we put that onto our summary report for easy reviewing and then you've got everything in on one report and you as a buyer can pull these lean searches yourselves you know you can do the work that they're doing they just get paid their, their charge for being able to go to these different municipalities and pull this information. But for a lot of the investors that are buying REO property, you wanna do these searches, you can reach out. Just make sure you're reaching out to the right company. All right, so the last one I wanna talk about, which I think is one of the most important because it's twofold, we'll talk about permits. And we talk about open permits, which a lot of title companies will pull. We talk about expired permits and closed permits, which are a whole nother avenue that a lot of title companies don't pay the extra for permits. And the reason why is because permits are for sure not covered in title insurance. Permit matters are not covered. So a lot of the title companies feel, well, why should we order a search on something that doesn't matter? And a lot of this is because it's what's right for the client. You need to make, you need to be in the know and these issues can come up. So talk a little bit about each type and, and maybe an issue that can come up with them. So the main difference between an open and an expired permit is an open permit is gonna be something that's considered more current by the city. It hasn't yet 
reached its expiration date, at which point additional fees would need to be ordered. So if you were just doing work on your house and it took longer than the permit department allowed, you would pay an additional fee to extend that permit. What happens is a lot of people pull permits so that they can do the work on the house and in case an inspector would have stopped by, they would see that the permit was posted, but they never actually bother to get the inspections. And that's when permits will go expired. So you can have a roof that was done by a licensed contractor with an open permit pulled, but it may never have passed an inspection and therefore they said, well, we're not gonna final it. That permit remains open and expired. You look like you're buying a house that has a brand new roof that was put on a year ago, but you may actually need to redo the roof at which point there would be an exorbitant cost, most times $20,000 or somewhere in that range. Start on getting you, engineers and stuff, it's uh, if you don't very pull, costly. If you don't pull the open permit. Absolutely. Yeah, and then they're gonna come back to us, and as a, as a reputable title company, if a client came back to me with a permit issue, my answer is not going to be what most answers are gonna be. Most answers are gonna be, well, it's not covered in your title insurance, so we don't cover it. Our answer would be, let's do everything we can possibly do to help get it resolved and minimize the expense for you and for us. And, and that's just what we do. That's how we do business. And what I want to talk about, one section to that, because when we talk about closed permits, closed permits don't really have to do with the lien search too much as far as issues. But I want to tell you is we pull closed for a certain reason. We've saved two deals over the 15 years of doing this where a lender is insuring a property and there was a new kitchen or a new roof and the appraiser noted it and they wanted to make sure that it was actually done properly with permits. And actually by pulling our closed uh, and finalized permit search, and we were able to send that to the lender, actually saved the deal and got the lender to agree and get the deal closed. So, you know, that's from a, a title company's perspective, you know, it's good for you to know that, but that's one of the reasons why we like to have open, expired, and closed to, again, protect the, the liability of our consumer and make sure you just have the best best amount of information in order to, to properly close on your home. Yeah, absolutely, I'll add to that where a lot of people will have, um, when we find a lot of this that originally was more prevalent in Miami-Dade, will put in a, an addition onto the back of a home. And the addition looks like it was done 100% to code and everything, but if you did check, and if they didn't pull a permit, there wouldn't be an open permit, there wouldn't be an expired permit, so you wouldn't be red flagged that way. But checking the closed permits like you say that you do in, in your searches, which we try and provide those whenever possible as well that are provided by the county, you would actually find out that there was no building attachment, there was no pool permit or whatever other permit, and then that would be a huge red flag as to whether or not this was done right. And the, the value of the property is based off of what the appraiser goes out and sees. And the appraiser seeing an extra 200 square feet in an attachment on the back of the house that may need to be ripped out. So you're paying a premium for that property on what may eventually need to be taken off. And so that saves your buyers Absolutely. a lot of headache as well going down the road. Well, I appreciate you coming in and talking about, you know, it's one thing for me to talk about it. It's another thing for them to hear right from the boss directly that provides a search. So, you know, thanks for coming in and educating our viewers on, on the importance of a lean search, how to read a lean search. You'll see the overlay. Uh, you can contact our office at any time. We'll be happy to review it. But so many of you are buying REO properties where they don't pull lean searches. So that's the first question. Are you getting a lean search? Second question we talked about is, are you getting all of the searches in a lean search being taxes, utilities, open, closed and expired permits and code enforcement issues? Uh, and just make sure you know how to review these searches. So if you wanna utilize it or review it with your client for your next closing, you know what you're looking at. So it's our job to ensure it, but if sometimes title companies will miss things by you having the education to better improve your skill set on reviewing these searches, will make you be a better professional in the business. So thank you for uh, right. coming down. We'll have Clear Choices information down below in the, in the comments section in case you need to reach out to them to order a lien search on a closing you may not be doing with us, or you may be looking to buy REO properties or something and you just need to reach out for a lien search. Again, my name is Kevin Tatcha, the owner of Independence Title. I thank you for watching this video and I look forward to seeing you at the next closing table. Have a great day. Thank you much.